Increased density of wireless traffic necessitates innovation to improve the capacity of the system. Transition from 4G LTE to 5G is expected to increase the connection density tenfold, from about 100,000 connections per square kilometer to 1 million connections per square kilometer. Wireless spectrum is a key resource and beam forming is the crucial feature that is going to optimize this. Traditional cellular networks would radiate signals in wide directions to provide coverage to clients within a sector, typically 120 degrees. There is significant wastage of radiated power, reducing the link budget to the clients. This also adds to the problem of interference across adjacent sectors. Beamforming alleviates this problem by directing the signals specific to different users and also reducing interference cost in adjacent sectors. Beamforming can be implemented in many different ways. Let us see how. The method of beamforming depends on the application, frequency band and bandwidth of the operation. For millimeter wave systems where their antenna spacings are very small, phased array or analog beamforming is used. Spatial beams are formed in the analog domains in the radios. For traditional cellular systems of sub 6 GHz, frequency domain, digital or hybrid beamforming is used where spatial filters are formed in the frequency domain in the baseband and they are formed using matching the signal of the channel of the users. In higher frequency bands such as millimeter wave, the antenna size and spacings are small and hence many number of antennas can be fit into a small form factor antenna panel. With large number of antennas can form very thin beams. Programmable phase shifters are used to control the phase of the common signal going and direct the signals in different directions. Antenna panels are typically cross-polarized, one polarization for the horizontal or H-plane and one polarization for the vertical or B-plane. This method also means that there are few radio chains feeding a set of antennas. One RF chain usually feeds signal to one polarization. This would result in a maximum of two streams for the system. To increase the number of streams or MIMO capacity, more RF chains would need to feed a different set of antennas in the panel. Having a lower number of RF chains also helps to reduce the baseband to RF interface for data rates. For example, a millimeter wave system of 400 MHz bandwidth, each RF chain data rate is 491.52 mega samples per second, each represented with 32 bits per sample, giving us a requirement of 15.7 gigabits per second of traffic. Since beamforming is performed in analog time domain, all the frequency tones in the OFDM system are directed in the same direction. While different frequency tones or resource elements can be allocated to different clients to achieve multiple access, with this constraint, however, they would have to be all in the same direction. So the scheduler must choose users to optimally using the spectrum. In large subcarrier spacings, large bandwidth, the slot times are very small. Complete bandwidth can be allocated to few users with very high data requirements to overcome these inefficiencies. Now let us look at the massive MIMO system and the beamforming aspects in the sub 6 GHz bands. We will look at the terminologies, antenna elements, TRX and streams. Antenna panels are bulkier as the wavelength of the system is much higher. A typical configuration for cross-polarized panel is shown here where there are four rows and eight columns of cross-polarized antennas. The total number of antenna elements is therefore 64. Due to the cost and size of the panels, not every antenna element is fed by a unique RF chain. A collection of antenna elements may be fed by the same RF chain but with fixed phase offsets. The available RF chains are called TRX or transmit receive chains of the system. The number of radio interfaces from the baseband that is the analog to digital converters, ADCs or DACs is the same as the number of TRX. In this example, one RF chain feeds two antenna elements, usually of the same polarization, one below the other. The uniquely observable channels in the baseband is the same as the number of TRX and not the number of antenna elements. The TRX number of time domain analog data is converted to frequency domain in the baseband. The beamforming operation is one which converts large number of TRX parallel frequency domain grids into frequency grids called streams. Typically for a 32 TRX system, eight streams are used and for 64 TRX systems, 
16 streams may be used. Streams are frequency domain grids where multiple users' encoded payload is arranged. Each user's data in itself may be multiple layers based on the MIMO capacity supported by that user and the channel conditions as experienced by that specific user. The streams are frequency domain grids where multiple users' encoded payload is arranged. Each user's data in itself may be multiple layers based on MIMO capacity supported by that user and the channel conditions experienced by that user. Here, in this example, user 0 can support two MIMO streams in the current condition and hence is allocated two streams in the frequency allocation, whereas some other users may require and are allocated only one stream each. This allocation can change every slot where different users are scheduled differently across the different slots. It is the beamforming operation which can separate the streams out spatially, operating like a spatial filter for each of the tones. Beamforming is nothing but a matrix multiply which takes streams as an input and generates frequency domain TRX data for each antenna as an output, and vice versa in the receive operations. Here we can now see that multiple users can be scheduled together in the same time frequency grid using digital beamforming. This is called MU MIMO, multi-user MIMO. The critical factor that allows this to happen are the channel conditions experienced by each of the different users is very different and by increasing the number of TRX of the system, the dimensionality of the channel is very high allowing us to separate the different users differently. Data and reference signal both need to be beamformed similarly so that the users can observe the combined channel on the reference signal and equalize the channel for decoding of the data. The 5G physical layer is designed to have reference signal dedicated for each of the data channels allowing beamforming to be inherent in the system. Choice of users or user pairing is critical for this system. Only upon knowing the channel conditions of the users are being orthogonal should they be assigned the same time frequency grid. Augmented channel of all the users in a resource block is used to generate the beamforming weights using zero forcing beamforming or eigenvector techniques. Eigenvector technique using the channel correlation matrix have longer time relevance. With zero forcing beamforming, however, we direct the signal towards one user by suppressing or nulling the interference towards the other users. The knowledge of the channel of each of the users over the resource blocks can be obtained by sounding channel from the different users. Then we can use the channel reciprocity of the TDD system to generate beamforming to use both in downlink and in uplink. With these techniques, we can see how the capacity of the system can increase to keep up with the growing demands. Hence, beamforming is a critical feature which will help us with the growing demands. Until next time, from the edge.